Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Jerry from Bigelow Woodcraft, and look what I have back today. I've got my stainless steel rods, and it's we're going to start assembling some things. So let's see how this goes. It's going to be tricky. I'm going to have to, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm going to have to get this on. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to have to do it this way. So I'm going to have to thread this past. Excellent. Now maybe that will fit on. A couple more turns. Okay. Now I'll spin her back up. There'll be a bearing down there yet. I need to get that on. As you can see, I have some chain on. This is going to be a tensioner right here. But those tensioner idler sprockets don't come in for another week. So chain will run from here to here, back to that gear there. I get a, this would be a little bit higher like that. So a triangle there, then across to here, then over to here. And again, I have another tensioner that will have another idler sprocket, sprocket on it. So, it's coming together, guys. Nice thing I need to do is transfer these holes. Make sure this is plumb with that front rail in both directions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run my chain from here to here to here. Let's cut this one right here. Get this master link in and see if we have it to the right length. OK, 
Okay, do we have enough? Oh yeah. I like this. This is going to work. So let me show you what we have. Now, you can see I'll have a tension right here for this one. One more link on there. It was so tight I couldn't get it to move. So now I'm sure this isn't even going to be close to enough chain. Nope. Darn. Okay, so we do have to order some more 40 chain. I I have some 420 chain, but dang it, it won't work because I have 40 sprockets. Darn. So I gotta I do have to order a 40 chain. Here's a look at what we have now. Now one thing I gotta be careful about. This is where my battery lives. I might have to do something a little different. When this comes up, everything has to clear. So far, everything, it looks like it's going to clear. So in case you didn't quite catch what I was talking about, when this carriage comes up, this whole engine comes up, and it will come way up to here. And I have a, I use a battery to run this. this. Oh, yeah. I'll just have to make sure I keep it strapped down and not let it vibrate otherwise the battery might come up and hit that chain and then we'd have all kinds of sparks and pieces and all right I just got this last chain. You know, I tried to take, I was gonna take one more link out and I think it would have been way too tight. Now I gotta tighten these up yet. That's really loose. I bet, man, I might be able to get one more link out of there. But I'm not going to right now. Let's see. Well, let's just see it. Let's see if it would turn. I bet it's gonna skip, but we'll see. I just set the battery on. Let's give this a try, guys. All I'm going to do is touch it. Touch the battery to it. The motor. Can you see the motor? So, I'm just going to touch the power to that motor right now. Let's see what happens, guys. I have everything in place. Now, I don't have all everything tightened up. I do have this one tightened up. I don't, I'm still waiting for two idler sprockets for my tensioners. I have two of them coming. Um, they'll be supposed, they're supposed to be here Thursday. Today's Monday. You guys will see this video tomorrow. So I have a couple of these slotted brackets that I made. I think I showed it to you. One will go here with a sprocket on it. And one will go where this one is. Guys, let's see how this, see if it goes up. I suspect we're going to see it skip, but let's see. Like I said, I don't have limit switches on it yet, so the only thing that can happen is it's going to just lift the screw up a little bit. I'll watch. Let's see. Because I don't have that locked down either. But it should lift it. So it's got to go clockwise to lift it. Oop, that's counterclockwise. All right, let's see what happens, guys. I heard something turning. There it goes. It's going up, guys. Now it's going slow right now. I got another sprocket coming. What happened? There it goes. It's going. It's going to work.
The bearing got snagged on that. Now it's all jammed up. Let me fix that first. There we go. I knew that was going to happen. Whew. Okay. Let's lift it up. It's going up, guys. Now it's slow. Hear those gears skipping. Guys, I think that's it for this video. There's nothing else I can do now until I get my idler pulleys or idler sprockets. I'm gonna need one here, like I said, one here. You can hear it jumping teeth and what that's gonna do is gonna start bringing it up and down like that. Let's see how consistent it came up. Oh, where's my glasses? I can't read a scale without a glasses anymore. One inch, 450, I'm sorry, four inches, 450 thousandths. Let's see how close it is. Four inch, 400 thousandths. So we're about 50,000 soft. So we're going to, it's going to take some adjusting, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to lower this all the way down now and get things locked in. Because I don't, what I don't want to do is I don't want to lift it on angles, you know, and wear out these Dellerin uh, plastics. So let's lower it back down. Well, actually, I'm going to work on it first. I'm going to get those bolts in. Guys, that'll do it. Have a great day. We'll see you at the mill next week. Idler sprockets and electronics now. Oh, one thing. Uh, I do have an, I'm buying, a, buying another sprocket for the drive motor, one with more gears, so it turns a little bit faster. Um, they didn't have it in stock. It was out of stock until the middle of March. So I'll order that when they get them back in stock. I think the one I was looking at was a 40 tooth. This is a 24 tooth, Something, 21 tooth.